Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mentor Talks. My name is Asha Bay, your host from the Office of Alumni Affairs in ECA at the U.S. Department of State. Our office opens the door to the million strong exchange alumni network, professional development, and grant opportunities for alumni of U.S. government educational and cultural exchange programs. Mentor Talks is a chance for you to connect with exchange alumni leaders, hear their stories, and ask for career advice. Our guest today has been busy working on branding, storytelling, and love letters. So please welcome to the show, Brian Rashid, of CEO of Brian Rashid Global, a modern day branding, marketing, and communications company. Brian is also a Fulbright Specialist Exchange alumni who empowered single teenage mothers in Columbia by teaching them how to shoot, direct, and edit short documentary films to tell and reclaim their stories. These days, Brian's working on a different narrative, and we're gonna find out what it is just in time for Valentine's Day. Welcome, Brian, and thank you for joining us on Mentor Talks. Thank you, Asha, thank you for having me, and it's great to be here. Good, good to see, good to see you. Same so before we get to questions from our audience, so we have a couple that we wanna start off with. Um, sure. So you have a law degree, and you also worked as a speechwriter for former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Uh, how did you end up going from law and political work to doing a Fulbright Specialist program? Well, early on in my career, I, I actually had political aspirations. I thought I might want to be the mayor of New York City. So I thought the best way to do that was to go and work for the mayor of New York City. And, and I enjoyed it very much, but I quickly realized that I did not want to be the mayor of New York. But what I did realize was that the skills that I was using in that administration, the storytelling, the communications, the speech writing, the, the communication to inspire an action was something that was really useful. And so I, ultimately, you know, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to do my own thing. And I, and I knew that those things that I was working on with the mayor and his administration could be transferred to other executives and other people in other parts of the world who wanted to share a story. And I wanted to be able to kind of pick who those people were a little bit more. And so that was 11 years ago and I moved to California and started my own business. And I did a lot of the same things. How do you pitch a venture capitalist? How do you tell your story? How do you script a narrative for your video? How do you create a social media campaign? How do you position yourself as a brand leader, as a thought leader in, in, the indus in any industry? And there was a lot of industries we worked with. And that's really kind of, it was a transferable skill set that I found to be very useful and it would allow me to do my own thing and then ultimately give my own speeches. And it was, you know, really kind of a, a, a different shift, but one that was very useful and seamless and intuitive to me at that time. And still to this day is really working well. And and you, I remember uh, we were talking before the show. You had mentioned that uh, it was actually someone that one of your mentors from your law program that told you about the Fulbright program. Is that right? And so, so the Fulbright program actually, yeah, it, you're right. It was so a, a really special, amazing guy named Fred Rooney. He's done uh, several Fulbrights as well. Um, he was the the godfather. They called him the godfather. of of the incubator. So he really dedicated his entire, he still dedicates his entire career to making sure that young lawyers and emerging lawyers that want to start their own practice that serves communities that are underserved in the legal, in the legal representation world in general around the world, get adequate, competent legal representation. He travels all over the world doing this. And he, he was actually the one, he was my very first mentor in law school. And we've done a lot of projects together over the years. And he said, he had just done a full brand the Dominican Republic and said, man, I had an incredible experience. I think that you would be great at it. You should apply. And initially, I, I didn't really know a lot about the Fulbright. And so I looked into it and I applied and I was, you know, honored to have received one. And, and I did it in Colombia. And, and, you know, in fact, we, Fred and I have done a lot of work together in Bulgaria uh, around some of his Fulbright work with the Fulbright folks in Bulgaria who are amazing. And um, so it, it's just been really, really great. And he, he brought it into my sphere and he brought it into my world. And it's just, you know, I, as I wrote to you and talked to you before the show and when we last spoke, the Fulbright experience for me was great, great, great experience. I felt like I had a lot of support. I felt like we were able to do really important work, actual work. And, you know, coming from an entrepreneurial background, I always wanna make sure that these processes and these programs 
that, that we go through that we invest time and energy and soul into have some real tangible benefit for the community that we're working with. And I really felt that in Colombia with these young women. And I really felt that just a commitment with the, with the Fulbright community and the teams and the staff and the, the guidance that we receive from the beginning until even now, like what we're doing now, this is awesome. You know, this is, I've done my Fulbright two years ago at this point. So it's, it really is an ongoing community and a system of, of empowerment. And I, I'm really grateful for that. That's great. Um, and so, and then, and then in 2020, you went to Uruguay with the intention of just staying for one month, but thanks to the pandemic that turned into a year. And then near the end of your stay, you, uh, you wrote a love letter to the country. Can you tell us more yeah, about that? Sure. So I, I started an entrepreneurship competition uh, back in 2018. And the idea was that we would travel all over Latin America and find social impact entrepreneurs that were doing work that was really meaningful, creating meaningful change in their community. So uh, devices that would lead to clean drinking water, uh, women led car, car ride sharing applications because there's a lot of violence and kidnapping around in, in, in different, in Bolivia, for example, um, microplastic factories that turned recycle, that turned trash to, to recycled products. So what I was looking for in this Uniting the Americas competition was entrepreneurs that were ha having social impact. And then I was bringing them to the Silicon Valley, to New York, to meet with other investors, to meet with other mentors, to create their brands, to create their stories. And so in 2020, my vision was to start that in Uruguay and then move all over the country, uh, the continent of, of Latin America, like I had been doing for the last couple of years. And, you know, a week before my flight um, back to New York from Uruguay, the airport closed because of the pandemic. And that was a really intense moment. And, and I've told that story a lot of times, but what was really beautiful about it was that I, I ended up staying there the entire year from February until December. And towards the end of my stay, I was so moved by what I saw in that country, by the people, by the places, by the, the, the heart, the soul, the, the spirit of the country that I wrote a love letter to the country. And it was entitled an, an American's unexpected love letter to Uruguay during a global pandemic. And I wrote it in a cafe one night. And I remember, Asha, I remember leaving the cafe that night. And I had written, I wrote it in about three or four hours. And I left that, that cafe that night. And I just cried in the street. And it was dark out. And it was nighttime. And I remember feeling like this is going to be really important. This thing that I just wrote, it's going to, it's, it's a transformative moment in my life. And I don't know how that looks yet. So I went home. I translated it. I posted it up on my social media. And then two days later, I was getting hundreds and hundreds of messages on my social media platforms. And I was trying to figure out what is going on. And one of the my friends that I was with at that time, one of my really good friends said like, hey, did you see this? And he put out his, took out his phone and he, he showed me a picture that 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 article had basically been featured on the front page of a, of a big Uruguayan newspaper. And from there, it got picked up by all of the major Uruguayan stations. And, and then it, it went totally viral. CNN Espanol did a story about me came to my house they did a story i was on all of the morning shows in uruguay and it was you know i was receiving at this point thousands of messages from people all over the world that were either uruguayan or that had some connection to uruguay and they were thanking me for these stories of hope for seeing their country for really grasping the heart that most tourists don't necessarily see and it was it was just that moment where i decided wow i started thinking about my career as a writer you know and and as, as I, I did a creative agency, I do video production, I'm a filmmaker, but really I think at my core, what I most love is writing. And so I started thinking about that. And then I thought, well, if, if people in Uruguay, a small country of 3.5 million people uh, can appreciate this so much, where else can I start to share these messages of positivity, of hope, of everyday meeting in everyday life? And so I started a platform in 2021 called Love Letters to the World and Its Keepers. And it started out as just a small Patreon page um, that I was living in the Big Island of Hawaii at the time. And, and, and so I was just kind of remotely working. And I, I started this Patreon page and, and it got some traction. And then I, I realized that I, I really wanted to do it around the world. I wanted to replicate this model of love letters to the world around the, the world. And the platform is a multimedia digital storytelling platform. It's short emotive films that I shoot and longer heart-centered essays, uh, love letters that I write, uh, long-form essays and, and writings, and they're just about people and places that make the world better. And so 
I've lived in New York City as most for most of my adult life, and I love New York City with all my heart and soul. And and I thought that it would be nice to go back to New York during a time where you know had gone through a lot with the pandemic and and just different things. And and I thought it could be a great service to write love letters to my favorite city in the world. And that's what I've been doing for the last basically six months, uh, the end of the second half of 2022. And now I'm really looking for ways to continue to do that in a global scale. Um, and so, you know, from a small cafe in a small country in South America, this platform was born and I get messages from people all over the world saying how much it helps. And it also really helps the people we feature, you know, because a lot of them are small business owners or a lot of them are entrepreneurs or, or just kind of everyday people that are feeding the birds in Central Park, that are feeding the animals in Central Park, that have gone every day for 13 years. You know, Bradley Tusk, who was a huge um, friend and, and, and sponsor to the program, started a, 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 a cafe in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, a block away from where his grandparents fled the Holocaust refugee camps and started their own textile company 50, 60 years ago. So these are really deep, rich stories that are told. And my hope is that it sheds light, it showcases, it highlights, but most of, mostly it shows people, number one, what's possible. And number two, it really helps these people that are taking a chance on doing something really beautiful and creative for the world to help them get more business or more eyeballs or more exposure or whatever the case may be. So that's a, a quick nutshell of my of my deep passion work of, of love letters to the world. Yeah, I, I was wondering how did you you know how do you meet these people that you interview for the love letters? Uh, yes, uh, people love to ask this question. So it you know because there's a couple ways. The first is I have a, a very deep network in new york right and and so some of these people i've wanted to do something really nice for for a long time and that have been just so inspirational to so many people um so you know in some ways i i have a built-in network but there are i would say half of the stories that i do are people that i just meet you know i'm walking to lunch in soho and i see a guy with a huge trumpet and i ask him what's going on and he says oh we play all over manhattan we were all five of us were buskers. We were all street musicians that didn't really know how to pay our rent. And we've ended up de doing a deal with the city of New York to be able to pay, play 62 concerts this month, this, this summer, all over New York City. So I went and did a story about them, you know, it, just meeting people. New York is so, you know, everyone's r rubbing elbows with everybody. And it's so dense and saturated that there are interesting stories everywhere. And I'm an explorer. I'm a curious person. I'm a I'm, world, I'm curious about the world. I'm curious about people. And so it's just a combination of people that I really believe in. Fred, you know, I did a story about Fred. Uh, and also, you know, people that I just really want to, I'm curious about. It's my own curiosity. And then I start, and you know, I don't do a story about everybody. I'll, I'll talk to a lot of people in a day or in a week. And I don't do a story about everyone just because it's, you know, it's my own time and energy. It's, there's a, there's a bandwidth to it. So um, I, you know, whatever kind of resonates and whatever I think, you know, if there's a good energy that I think that they could, that, you know, I also look to see if they're, if they're are they good on camera, are they going to be captivating? Um, and then what can we do? The magic of cinema, you know, what can we do to, to paint a really beautiful picture around someone who otherwise wouldn't necessarily have anyone watching anything because they're just deep in the work. I was thinking that when I um, I saw that love letter where you featured the woman with the flowers. Oh yeah, Taiwan. Yeah, she yeah. she she was just. I was walking home Sunday morning, getting a coffee. I was walking home and I saw her and I and we smiled at each other. We crossed and we smiled at each other, and I said, and and she actually passed. She went about two blocks up the street, and then I said, oh god, I gotta talk to that woman. So I ran after her. And then I said, hey, you know, I have this I have this platform. I feature really unique people. Can I ask you a few questions? And she loved it. And, and in fact, that was one of the ones. And that was a quick one. I shot that in about 30 minutes. And then, you know, we had to edit a couple hours later. That was one of the ones that got the most traction, believe it or not, in terms of messages. Like, you know, I, I, I needed to find my own skin today. I needed to find my own voice today. I needed to find my own originality today. And that video really helped. So you don't know, you know, and I know that there's a lot of people and thank you for everyone that's here watching and listening. And I know there's a lot of people trying to figure out how do you, t how do you tell a story and how do you, how do you, uh, you know, create something that resonates. And I just think that the, the thing, the first thing, and maybe we'll get more into it, but the first thing is 
don't overjudge what you think is going to happen with your story. You know, like when I, when I was talking to Taiwan, I like there, there wasn't, I didn't have a very clear, I mean, it really wasn't aligned with a lot of the other stuff I was doing in terms of style. You know, there was only a couple of shots, a couple of takes. It was all on one street, but don't underestimate the messages of the people, the channel of the, of the, 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 the story of the vessel of the channel, the person that you're putting in front of the camera, because if I were to try and anticipate what I thought Taiwan's message was going to be, it was way different than what I got from people. And so I think it's it's really beautiful to, to, to not control and to not convolute and to not try and manipulate what you think is the message. Let the world decide. Let the people decide. Let the, the light of the subject shine through. That is, that's great advice especially when it comes to uh, video and visual um, communications. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, there's also something I noticed that uh, love seems to be a big theme um, of your of your work and uh, even of, like, your social media postings. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I just think that the, the world runs on love. I mean, I think that there's so much distraction right now, and I think that, you know, and love takes on a lot of different forms right like there's obviously romantic love there's love for family there's love for children there's love for animals there's love for nature there's you know there, there's love for the space between the words that says more than the whole we're all the words combined there's love there's you know there's just so much to fall in love with a smile like how does your feet how do your feet feel in like bare your bare feet feel in wet grass you know, what is a sunset do to you? What does a sunrise do to you? I'm very deeply connected to the to the natural world, and I'm very deeply connected to people and the energy that surrounds them and their story. And I think that what I am most interested in to explore around love is getting taking people places that maybe other strangers wouldn't take them, right? Like asking them tough questions or or or, or really really listening you know that's also love like the 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 space that the the space that you hold for someone that is telling their life story i mean it's very strange to do what i do in a lot of ways because my goal as a storyteller and as an entrepreneur and as a video videographer and a filmmaker and a writer is that i don't want to occupy a lot of your time and space but i want to get as deeply to the core of your being as I can, as quickly as I can. And in some cases, you don't even know who I am. You don't even know what I'm gonna do with this information. So there is a deep level of mutual trust that is unique and it's, it's, uh, it's vulnerable and it's powerful and it is love. And so my what I do as a storyteller is I am so committed to the responsibility that comes with that where I don't want to misrepresent you. I want to be a completely honest uh, storyteller for you. And I want to, I want to make it alive. I want to make it magical. I want to make it, I want to, I want to bring out sides of your story that you may have never even thought about, but I don't want to, I don't want to exaggerate. I don't want to lie. So that there's, there's a real art to that. And there's a real bravery to that. Like I, most people these days are avoiding contact with, anyone at all costs because it's just so easy to go into the phone that's why it's so beautiful what you are what you're all doing like this show is so beautiful and i've watched some of your other episodes and it's just like how can we connect and there are people on here you know from all over the world that's amazing and that's brave and that's like taking time out to try and figure out how can we have this human experience together how can we help each other with our gifts and talents without kind of intruding into each other's space but how can we do it in a way that, that does feel honest, that does feel mm, that does feel exciting about 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 you know, let's make life exciting and let's make it magical. Let's 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 bring back the romance and the enchantment of life because it's just too fast and it's too mundane otherwise. And so that I'm really committed to that. And 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 this is this is the best way that I know how to do it. You know, I've tried a lot of different things in my life, but really it always comes back to this. It's like distilling the essence of someone in a rapid speed amount of time 
and then conveying it in an honest and exciting way with some enchantment and some romance and some poetry and some, some, some philosophy, but all true to the essence of the person and true myself. And that's what I'm after. And that for me is real love. That's wonderful. Yes. I also noticed that, um, so yeah, you, you're also a public speaker and you've done some TEDx talks. Um, and I know that you did one on connecting the dots. And it sounded like it was about being authentic. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I mean, connecting the dots. So that was my first TED talk. And that was like the, I mean, I'll tell you, Asha, like I've at this point over the last 11 years, I've, and I've appeared on, uh, I think I've been to like 13, 14 different countries. I've spoken at like hundreds of times and, and I, I love it. That was the talk. That was the first real big talk that I had. And I was really, really nervous. I don't think I slept at all the night before. I spent the night at my brother's apartment in Chicago. The TED Talk was in Chicago. And I just, I was so nervous. And then when I got on that stage, I realized something pretty quickly, which was all you have to do is talk about the people that have changed your life. Like, like you know this story. You, you live this story for, at that point, 29, 30 years of your life. And so, you know, connecting the dots was really about how, if you take a moment and slow down, you can probably identify one, two, three, 13, 30, 100 different people or moments that have been deeply impactful. That I call them moments of impact. And you know, you know when they're happening. I mean, and when you really get tuned into yourself, you not only know when they're happening, but you know that, hey, wow, this is about to happen. You really need to be present for this right now. Because you don't want to look back on this in 10 years and be like, wow, that was a good moment. You want to have that pattern recognition and that self-awareness to know that this is about to happen. How can I be as present as I can possibly be in this moment to really digest it, to really love it? And, and so when I stood on that stage, I was like, this is it. This is my chance to really honor the three to five most important moments of my life that have led me here on my own as an entrepreneur, still trying to figure it out, still like barely paying the rent every month. But I, I'm here and I'm doing it. And 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 somehow I'm, my voice has captivated enough people to be invited to give this talk. And and so let's do this. And and that was the first one. And then the second one was really about, you know, I come from my 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 father's uh, side is Lebanese and from a, a family of immigrants and and they came to this country and they started a, a, a small deli and 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 they, they just I heard the stories over years as I was growing up about what made great customer service. And when we were moving more and more into a digital age, I didn't want people to lose that. I didn't want to lose, you know, it was a way of honoring my tradition, my heritage, but I also felt like a lot of people could benefit from hearing the story of what does really caring about your client, really caring about your customer, more than just a dollar sign, more than just a sale or an ROI. What does it look like when you really care about somebody and how can you translate that into a digital age? And, and so that was the second one that was in New York. And um, both were beautiful experiences. And then the, the, the other thing I'll say to anyone that's like trying to, tr to do a speaking career of any sort, whether it be, you know, through through a full by platform or through their own entrepreneurial journey or through through, you know, an online presence is you think that this TED talk is going to be the one you you always have this inclination that or this desire to make this be the one. It's never really one thing. It's just, it's just a lot of different pieces of the puzzle that come together. It's just a lot of different steps that come together into the marathon. And I think that, you know, take some pressure off of yourself, really enjoy it and push for, for, for more and more greatness. But it, it's, it's almost never like, this is the thing that's going to make me. It's just pieces. And I think that the more wisdom and the more experience that I got as an entrepreneur and as a speaker and as a business person and as a project leader and as a manager, I realized that once you start taking a lot of pressure off of these individual things, you enjoy them more. And then you just realize like, it just all adds up. There's this, a phrase in Spanish that I love. It's just todo suma, like it all adds and it continues adding. And for me, that's the fun, that the momentum, the little wins, the ads like this, we're doing this today. Who knows what happens with this in a year or five years? Who knows who's in here that, that, that we could do something cool with? It's just, it's really fun. It's just really fun. It's, that's, it, that's why I love all of this. It's just because you don't know the, 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 the endless possibilities are just that infinite. Yeah. 
And yeah, you were talking about uh, just, you know, living in the digital age. And we've, we've noticed like on our team that you, um, your Instagram is very personal. Um, yeah. And so do you, have, do you have a strategy behind that? Or are you just, are you just posting things as, you know, as they, you know, um, inspire you? This is where I'm a bad strategist. I have no strategy behind my Instagram page. My, my strategy is like, speak my truth, speak from the heart, try and be as vulnerable as possible. Um, say things that feel uh, uh, authentic to me. You know, these are all buzzwords that we hear all the time, but I really, you know, it's, it's sort of like what I said earlier about how you don't know what you're gonna say is gonna resonate. That is what I think. I think that tr social media has been a tremendous has been a tremendous help for me because people really do connect to the writing and I'm not like never have I sat down and written or directed or filmed something that I think to myself, I wonder how this is going to be, but never, I just write, I, 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 I do what I do. I put it out and then I just trust, you know, every year I pick a new word that is going to guide my year. 2020 was trust, ironically enough. That was the year I got stranded in Uruguay. <laughs> and um, I just, I really do trust. I really do trust that the right people will come into the sphere. I really do trust that the right people will resonate. I really do trust that it will lead to, uh, you know, collaborations that, you know, we, we are divinely uh, knowledgeable and wise as humans, but we're also limited in our vision because of we're living in a human existence. And I do believe in, you know, and you name it, whatever you want to name it. But I do believe that there are energies at play that are metaphysical, that are out there, that are pulling us in different directions that we in maybe in our subconscious can know, but like in our consciousness, we don't even fully grasp. And so I think that, you know, there is a balance, right? There's a, there's a give and take to creativity if I'm just taking from you all the time, you know, it's again, it's why this is a beautiful project, like a podcast, you're giving, this is a giving, you're also receiving. And that's why I love love letters. I, I, I love love letters. I'm giving a lot. I mean, I'm really listening. I'm, I'm distilling. It's a lot of energy, but I'm also receiving a lot. Like I'm receiving perspectives that I never thought about through these interviews, through these conversations. And, and with that give and take, so I'm giving my thoughts and my energy through writing a film. And, and then the take is usually like, that resonated, you wanna do something. I mean, I see someone on, is on here right now, Suzanne. Suzanne, thank you for writing me. Th Suzanne wrote me a really beautiful email. I saw you're gonna be on Mentor Talks. I see that you're doing love letters. I'm a writer, I did a Fulbright, like let's talk. And, and who knows what comes to that. But there is a mutual like exchange. And I really believe in that balance. And I really try hard to always give a little bit more than I'm taking. And that's just the only way that I can really live in, in joy and in the completion with myself. So that's my strategy, I guess. That sounds good. Very authentic. Yeah. Um, so we are actually almost out of time. Um, and, and I feel like that the, the half hour just flew by. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, there's other aspiring content creators out there. Um, what advice would you give to them? For, go for it. Know? Just go for it. 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 Just don't overthink it. Don't be critical on yourself. Just go for it. You know, the, 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 there, there is, you don't know how it's going to land. I said that five or six or 18 times at this point. Number one, number two, do it because you love it. Like, don't, don't do it for any other reason. It won't work. It's not sustainable. This is a lot of work. This is a lot of work. I have to stay pretty disciplined around it. This is, uh, there's a lot of days that I don't want to create things. There's a lot of days that I feel tired. There's a lot of days that I feel like, what's the point? There's a lot of days where apathy shadow comes in, but at the end of the day, there's, I can't think of or conceptualize anything else that I'd rather do more. And, um, I think that that's key. Like do the things that you love to do. And then, you know, you will get better. You will get better at your craft. You will get better at writing. You will get better at content creating. You will get better at filmmaking. And I think that the most, the most, most, most important thing is make sure that it's true for you. You know, there are moments where I will think about something or I'll look at a trend or I'll be, people will say like that, this is trending on Instagram. You should write a story about it. I just, you know, what's true for you. You really know, like for real, for real, for real, you know, 
And if you can tap into that truth and guide with that, and then know that that's enough, know that you're enough, know that your words and actions are enough, then you'll, you'll be fine. And, and ultimately the beautiful thing about the internet, I guess, is that, you know, it will bring you the opportunities that it's supposed to, whether that be just a collaboration with one person, whether that be internet fame, whether that be funding, whether that be a new business, whatever, just trust that if you are pure hearted and really doing the work and, you know, you have a level of talent that will set you up for success, then you will be able to find some sort of niche for yourself and it will be really fun if you love it and if you're doing it true to yourself. Those are my two biggest pieces of advice. That's that's great advice. If you love it and be true to yourself. Yeah. I like it. Yes. So with that, um, we're going to have to wrap up and just want to say thank you so much, Brian, for being with us today. Thank you, Asha. And thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And a big thank you to everyone who's tuned in. Are you interested in learning more about our awesome Exchange alum alumni? Um, you can visit our website at alumni.state.gov and follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. In the meantime, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all for our next Mentor Talks. Bye, everyone.